Hello, welcome to Advanced Composites. Today is the third day of the ongoing week, which is the second last week of this course, that is the 11th week. In last two days, we have been developing equilibrium equations for composite plates as pertinent to the deformed configuration of the plate, not necessarily which is same as the undeformed position. We have been doing this so that we are able to capture the buckling phenomena in composite plates. What we have, till, uh, we have seen still so far is that the first two equations related to force equilibrium in the x and y, z, uh, y directions, they remain unchanged when we consider the deformed uh, position of the plate. However, the equilibrium equation related to sum of forces in the z direction does undergo changes and it does require some additional terms. So, this is one uh, difference we have noticed. Now, the other three equations for the deformed uh, uh, for equilibrium are sum of forces for m x. So, they should be 0 and then the same thing should be true for uh, sum of forces in the y direction and in the z direction. Uh, some of I am sorry. So, so, this is moment equilibrium around x axis, y axis and z axis. So, for these three directions, if you do the analysis in the way exactly as we have discussed, what we will see is that we do encounter some additional terms, but those additional terms are so small and of higher orders that they can be neglected. So, the only equation which changes is the third equilibrium equation which relates to the condition sum of forces in the z direction are 0. So, sum of moments in x direction in x direction it remains unchanged and it is del m x over del x plus del m x y over del y and that equals q x. And if we do sum of moments in around y axis then that equation also does not change. So, that is del m x y over del x plus del m y over del y and that equals q y. And then we have shown that the sum of moments in the z direction it gets identically satisfied because tau x y is equal to tau y x because of this condition. So, if I plug these equations and I put them back into the equilibrium equation for the z direction force equilibrium equation, because here it involves q x q y and the q x's and q y's they are described in terms of m x and m x y. Then my overall equation which uh, is a combined equation for sum of moments around x axis around y axis and sum of forces in the z direction all these are individually 0. The overall equation which governs these this requirement it comes to this. So, it is n x So, this is the overall governing equation. What we will do is we will actually use this equation. 
So, this is one uh, governing equation and what are the other two governing equation for composite plates? If I seek their equilibrium in deformed configuration, so this is So, these are the other two equilibrium equations. So, if I have to capture effects like buckling, I have to consider these three equations rather than the other equations which we had developed earlier. And we what we find is that these terms are the additional terms which come into picture as I am considering equilibrium of a plate, whether it is a composite plate or an isotropic plate. So, for such types of plates, if I am considering their buckling phenomena, then these three terms related to n x, n x y and n y appear in the third equilibrium equation. And once we consider that these terms, we will be able to capture the buckling phenomena. What we will do next is actually in today's as well as the remaining classes, we will actually solve this equation for different situations and see how this uh, helps us predict the overall buckling phenomena. So, the first example we will consider is of a very long infinitely long plate. So, so, this is a plate and this is infinitely long. It has a finite length. So, this dimension is b, it has a finite length and the plate is getting subject. So, the what, what is uh, so special about the plate? The plate is simply supported on this entire length, on this entire length. So, you have a long plate. So, the plate is extremely long and this plate is entirely simply supported on this edge and on this edge, on these two edges. Okay. So, this is one edge, this is another edge, this is the length direction. The plate is very long. So, it is simply supported on this edge and it is simply supported on this edge. So, this is one. So, which means that what are the boundary conditions? So, if this is my x axis and this is my y axis and the thickness is the z axis. So, I am looking at the plate in the x y plane not in the x z plane which we have been to, uh, typically doing. So, in the x y plane on this. So, I can position my axis system somewhere at end. So, this is my x axis, let us say this is my y axis. So, what are the boundary conditions? The boundary condition is that w naught is equal to 0 at x is equal to no at y. y is equal to 0 and y is equal to b. Also, because the plate is simply supported along its length moment and what moment will it be m x m y or m x y? It will be m y. So, m y this is also 0 at y equals 0 and y equals b. Okay. The other thing I am doing is that somehow the plate is very long. So, somehow I am subjecting it to an external load uniformly distributed load and this is n some n. Okay. So, the other boundary also is that external n x equals n and because the plate is just rectangular and very long n x will be equal to n at every point in the plate. So, because yeah, so this implies n x 
is equal to n at all points in the plate. Okay. Some other extra conditions we will say that the plate is symmetric and because the plate is symmetric what does it mean? The B matrix is 0 and also the plate is orthotropic. So, it means D 1 6 is equal to D 2 6 is equal to A 1 6 is equal to A 2 6 is equal to 0. So, these are the conditions and now what we have to do is we have to figure out whether this plate when it is subjected to this compressive load if it will it buckle or not and how will it buckle. So, that is what we are interested in. So, we have to understand the buckling of this plate. Okay. So, now we look at these three equations because we have to solve these equations to understand the buckling phenomena and what we find is that the equations for equilibrium in x and y direction we do not have to worry about these because n x depends only on u and v n y only depends on u and v only and n x y also depends only on u and v because the b matrix is 0 because b matrix is 0. So, what is n x? n x is equal to a 1 1 times epsilon x plus b 1 1 times epsilon y naught plus a 1 6 times gamma x y naught plus b 1 1 times curvatures where w comes into picture. But because b terms are 0, these two equations do not influence the solution for w. So, only the third equation is relevant and because we are thinking about buckling, we want to see how the thing is going to deform and at what load. So, we are interested in finding out w. So, only third equation is relevant in context of determining w naught x y. Okay. So, we are not interested in, in context of out I will not call it determining w naught x y, but in context of understanding out of plane response, out of plane behavior. Okay. So, what do we do? We have to solve this differential equation, we have to solve this differential equation and the way we will do it is remember uh, how do we solve these different uh, these problems. One way is if we are interested in finding the exact solution is that we guess a displacement function and that displacement function has to do three things. It has to satisfy all the kinematic boundary conditions, it has to satisfy all the secondary boundary conditions related to forces and moments and the displacement function also has to satisfy the differential equation. Okay. So, this is if we want to develop an exact solution, if we wanted some approximate solutions using Rayleigh Ridge or Galerkin method, then we only satisfy some boundary conditions. In Rayleigh Ridge, we are we only solve, we only ensure that displacement based or kinematic boundary conditions are satisfied and in Galerkin we satisfy all the boundary conditions, but we do not worry about the accuracy of the, uh, the uh, for uh, we do not worry too much about. Uh, satisfying the governing differential equation, but here we are going to develop an exact solution. So, our so we will develop an exact solution okay. So, we assume that w naught x y is some constant times sin pi x over lambda 
sin phi y over b okay and lambda is a parameter and we'll understand what this means later and then now we check whether this satisfies the boundary conditions so at x is equal to i'm sorry at y equals 0 w not x y is 0 and at y equals b w not x y is again 0. So, it is satisfies kinematic boundary conditions. Okay. The next thing we check is is m y equal to equal to zero at y is equal to zero and b. Okay, so what is m y? m y is equal to it is d one two del two w naught over del x square and there is a negative minus d 2 2 del 2 w naught over del y square minus d 2 6 del 2 w naught over del x del y. Now, d 2 6 is 0 because of the material hmm? and if I plug in the value of w which we have assumed what I get is minus d 1 2 and this is pi over lambda whole square plus d 2 2 pi over b whole square sin pi x over lambda sin pi y over b because this is the function we have chosen and times this constant w naught. So, I will write w naught here. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is there and now we check whether this m y is 0 at. So, this val is equal to 0 at y equals 0 and also at y equals b. So, what this means is that remaining two bcs also satisfied, they are also satisfied. So, the third thing is we have to ensure that it should satisfy the differential equation. Okay. Now, in the differential equation, the value of n x is what minus n, the value of n y is 0 because it is a long plate, it has no external loads, it has no external loads in the y direction. So, n y is 0 and n x y is also 0 at all points in the so in the bar in the system. So, so my overall modified differential equation becomes minus n del 2 w naught del x square plus del 2 m x over del x square plus del 2 m x y over del x del y plus del 2 m y over del y square and this equal to 0 because there is no external transverse load also on the plate. So, q is also 0. 
So, m x is equal to what minus d 1 1 del 2 w naught over del x square minus d 1 2 del 2 w naught over del y square plus other terms 0 d 1 6 and d 2 6 term is 0. Similarly, m y is equal to minus d 1 2 del 2 w naught over del x square minus d 2 2 del 2 w naught over del y square plus other terms involving d 2 6 and d 2 6 and m x y is equal to 0 plus 0 plus 2 d 6 6 del 2 w naught over del x del y and there is a minus here. Okay. So, what I get is if I plug in all these numbers, what I end up getting is n del 2 w naught over del x square plus d 1 1, this is a fourth derivative Okay. So, what we will do is now what we will do is that we will plug in the value of w naught the assumed function and we have assumed that w naught is this this function and we will plug in this function in this simplified differential equation which will also help us understand buckling and using this then we will compute what kind of buckling loads and wavelengths are involved in this buckling phenomena. So, that is precisely what we plan to do tomorrow and till then have a great time. Thank you.